Hello everyone, this is Craig Mel from Evolution Fitness and Athletics. And today, as you can probably guess from the title of the video, uh, this is just a short message, uh, just covering the relationship between mental health and, uh, and exercise. How exercise, healthy lifestyle, um, how training, how sports, anything active can you know can improve your quality of life in terms of mental health more so anxiety uh, you know just general nerves and confidence and um, also depression okay and it's no it's no kind of great surprise that you know you do feel great after a good workout or whatever activity you've been doing if it's been uh, training uh, for a sport training for your own well-being or even you know the like sport you know there's something I mean a lot of kind of gym sessions you might kind of hate halfway through you know you might really struggle think oh I can't be doing this I want to go home want to give up or rest it but basically what you do is you just you just push through and you know you get it done when you do you finish you feel great you feel amazing you go go in the shower go and get something to eat and you know the, the feeling uh, of accomplishment and just the overall feeling of well-being just does so much for your, your mood uh, does so much for your brain you know you are you know it's, it's a really really good feeling uh, it's no surprise that people actually do get uh, addicted to exercise you know, if you do it long enough, you know you do, you just want to keep on going back. You know, the endorphins that it releases, um, you know, are probably much the same as what you'll get from any other kind of stimulants, you know, like drug related or whatever. Um, you know, whether it's alcohol or whatever, you know, you do, you get, you can get addicted to it. Uh, not always a great thing, but, you know, as long as you are working within your limitations, you know when to stop. Um, and you don't let it have an adverse effect on you. Okay. Um, sorry, I just actually leaned on my pedal there. I've got the my car engine on just for a bit of heating, not long finished work. So I'm just quickly going to uh, record this video and then get on. Okay, so sorry, being sidetracked again happens a lot. If it starts doing your head in, then let me know. Let me know in the comments below. And I'll try and stay on track. Okay. Um, I had to keep on looking around as well, still cars around about me in the car park, so I'm going to get caught because I can't actually see anyone coming in the mirrors, so, you know, just red face alert. Anyway, I digress. So, as a, as a serious subject, um, it can be sensitive, but it doesn't have to be because there's nothing, I mean, mental health-wise, you know, it's something that can affect anybody, anytime, and, you know, a huge, huge population in the world has suffered some form of mental health through no fault of their own uh, you know and I, I could you know I could research and tell you how many figures uh, you know what percentage of the population but that would just be a total stab in the dark finger and their stuff there's so many that go unreported so many people don't realise they're, they're struggling with mental health um, you know, so the, the figures are, you know, I, I wouldn't ever rely on them, you know, I can maybe look up or you can do a bit of research yourself and find out how many are actually reported to see if you can maybe have a guess at how many may not be. So, you know, from myself, I mean, obviously I'm not a psychologist, psychiatrist or anything like that, you know, I can't actually give you any advice to you know, to help with them that is struggling with mental health. I can only go from own experiences, share with you a wee bit about, you know, my my story, how how I've experienced it. Um, and I'm not saying that exercise is going to be you know, it's it's not going to be the the cure or the remedy for all types of mental illness. But, you know, it will will help many um, 
sure I don't keep on getting distracted. I'm seeing flashing lights and car lights and everything, but um, I'm just going to just going to battle through. Okay, so yeah. Anyway, so for, for myself, um, you know, I've I've had. I think I think I have probably been through a bit of depression in my life. It's very difficult to, you know, because I was never diagnosed. It's easy enough for me to talk about, share with you, but um, you know, I, I don't think I real I always realised when I was suffering from depression. I never ever went to see anybody about it, and it's in later years I found out you know that a lot of people. Um, that are depressed don't realise they're depressed, you know. I've thought I've been happy for most of my life. Um, when I look back, so I'm spinning you quite a long tail here, already a longer video than what I intended, but when I look back to my, all through school I was fine, all through high school I was fine, I was very active, okay, so I used to play football almost every day of the week, I remember summer holidays, um, me, my mate Gav, my cousin Darren, uh, used to spend the uh, whole summer holidays as teens just playing football from the sun went up to the sun went down. Um, you know, in between them, through my childhood, you know, I, I dabbled in many martial arts. I was involved in judo, then a bit of kung fu. Um, but again, it was just football was, was my main thing. You know, played a wee bit of tennis. You know, I did, I did many, many sports, tried. I had even tried rugby one of once oh, yeah, in school, yeah, gave that a go. Um but again it wasn't for me, I just wanted to play play football all the time. Uh, you know, so I was very active but I was very happy. I was very confident. And then I think, you know, when I got to my late twenties, uh, that's when I started having issues with my cirrhotic arthritis. You know, so in my, my late teens, early twenties, this was basically my schedule. You know, over and above work. On a Monday, I would be I'd do karate. Tuesday, I played five sides. Wednesday, I had karate. Thursday, I played five sides. Friday, I had karate or seven sides. And Saturday, I gave myself a day off, and then I had I was playing Sunday football. So, you know, I was very active, I was young, I was fit, I was a lot slimmer than what I was in later years, and I just had so much confidence. Then, when I got to my late 20s, I... Um, you know, in karate, I had... I'd, I'd, I'd achieved, like, kind of first time. Um, so I'd achieved first hand in karate, first hand black belt, um, you know, so that kind of gave me plenty of confidence as well. I mean, quite often, you know, I was just, I wasn't scared of anyone, you know, I'm um, not really a tall guy, I'm about 5'4", maybe 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, depending how high the, the spikes are in my hair, you know, if I let my hair grow, spike out a bit, I can maybe reach average height if I... I let it go long enough. <laughs> so, you know, I wasn't a tall guy, but still, never, never really afraid of anyone. Um, had plenty of confidence. You know, I could get, get out with my pals at weekends, usually a Friday night. That's why I didn't really do any sports on Saturday. Um, you know, and be among anyone, plenty of confidence. I was never aggressive. I never liked to start fights. I just always liked to have a great time, have a real good time with my pals. But I just knew that, you know, the fence had kicked off. I'd be able to handle myself and dig my, my pals and family with uh, any issues, you know, if needed. So, yeah, so plenty of confidence, very, very fit. So, when I was in my mid to late twenties, that's when I started getting issues with the uh, cirrhotic arthritis. I had to change my sport to put golf when I was about 26, going on 27, um, which didn't really, you know, I thought, you know, if I did, if I just played golf instead, you know, plenty of walking around, I'd be up there every, every night of the week, 
practicing and at weekends that was me would be playing the, the competitions uh, so I kept up what I was eating like nutrition wise, diet wise I wasn't really into my nutrition back then I did enough exercise to keep the, the fat at bay or down um, but then you know with the, the lack of uh, sporting activity I, you know, I, I totally ballooned in the space of uh, a few years so I was sitting around but then I didn't really make a connection before but I, I, start, I was in a toxic relationship that ended that knocked my confidence um, you know obviously that finished and then I spent the very late part of my, my late 20s through my 30s you know like my, my whole my whole demeanour changed, my whole personality had changed, you know, again I didn't realise at the time and I was pretty, kind of pretty happy go lucky but inside my stomach was always churling chur churling? churning um, I was quite anxious at times really nervous things, you know, like work wise you know, I'd been working, I'd get, I'd get really nervous if something happened or I've had to speak to you know, like somebody with seniority or whatever um, and I knew I was in trouble for something not very often but sometimes you know, we're all human we all make mistakes and you know things like that was, was really daunting I was like, really nervous um, I realised you know, obviously I didn't, I didn't practice any martial arts at the time and I just felt a wee bit you know just a wee bit more timid you know I didn't have the same kind of confidence I did, I'd lost my swagger um, and then it was at some point you know when I'd left RBS and I worked for Shell I think it was halfway through my Shell uh, career um, you know so, so all throughout that time I should mention I did kind of double with the gym I was in and out of the gym um, kind of quite often you know, I'd, I'd pack it in I'd balloon and I'd get back I'd go right I'd lose a bit of weight Put on a bit of muscle and things, but the confidence never ever came back. And it wasn't until I got to the, you know, the halfway through my career, uh, Michelle, I started to gain a wee bit more confidence. I had a wee look at myself and thought, you know, you you are getting, you know, far too far too big, far too, you know, your fat is out of control. I thought, right, I'm going to do this seriously. I spent a lot of time, I mean I spent a lot in my thirties um, single, so at night I would just lie watch YouTube videos and you know as, as sad as I am, I would used to watch, uh, watch a lot of people training, you know, just to see how, you know, how they went about it, how they approached their training, also watched a lot of personal trainers online, it's not something at the time I would have ever valued uh, enough to invest in. Uh, as a personal trainer, I would, you know, I would never consider um, taking the services of one. Just kind of plugged away, did my own thing, watched these videos, start to see a difference, start to lose a bit of weight. Um, and then for the third time in my career in corporate finance, I was facing redundancy. And I thought, right, enough's enough, I can't do this anymore. I thought, I can't work in a career, in an industry, um, or in a vocation that, you know, is so transferable that they can, you know, let ship your job abroad um, and get it done for a fraction of the price, you know, after me, you know, taking on the skills, having it for so many years and then just uh, handing it over. In fact, the very last finance job I had, I the very last finance job I had, I had to um, learn it just to hand it over. You know, which was difficult, especially it was a company I, re I really enjoyed working for. So it was that enough is enough, um, and I thought I need to go out and do my own thing. I need to start my own business. I need to make my own money for once instead of counting everybody else's. So, I, th I dabbled in, I considered many careers and one, one of the big ones was, uh, you know, I was planning being a driving instructor. And don't forget, I was training here along this, during this period as well and I was losing weight and I was starting to feel a wee bit better. 
about myself, how, how, I, how I looked. Um, but, you know, I just found the, the studying for being a driving instructor just a bit boring, to be honest, a bit tedious. And, um, you know, and I really struggled um, to take anything in. I realised I was running out of time. I mean, the, to the, my last employer's credit, you know, I got, like, a year and a half's notice. And they also um, helped with like, funding for retraining and things, so um, I thought well, that's what I was going to put it towards. Um, and it was actually, unless you, you know me, know me well, and I've already told you a story, but my eureka moment to get into health and fitness um, as a career was when I was actually in the gym and I was sitting on a pec tech machine, or arm adductor, whatever you want to call it. Um, or chest fly machine, I know it's got many names, and I was watching all the kind of young PTs walking about, I think they might have been going through their um, level 3 or their, or their HND, um, and I watched young one young boy demonstrating, you know, a, a tricep pull down, explaining with a V-bar grip that it works out ahead of the tricep, all that, and I'm thinking, I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, I know this, I know all this already, I learn this stuff for fun, so, you know, why wouldn't I want to, why wouldn't I want to make that my career? So I looked into it, I spoke to someone who had just been through it all, who is big, really big in uh, group fitness. Now, you know, I'd say road he's gone down. Uh, you know, it wasn't the road I wanted to go down, I just preferred the one-to-one -one or one-to-two kind of uh, personal training uh, side of it. Uh, so that's what I decided I wanted to do. So I spoke to, to this boy and he told us what he did to get through it. So that's it, I put the, the funding I had to, to good use and I qualified. Um, so like you say, it wasn't the kind of group fitness I was I was interested in, it was more of one-to-one -one personal training, but when I took my, um, my shifts with IL, I thought I'd work with IL and get uh, a knowledge of the industry, learn, learn my, my trade in a kind of professional environment, you know, um, and one thing I didn't really fancy was taking classes, um, but I did, I had to do, I decided I'd do what it took to make sure I, I kept the money coming in, because, you know, I still had a mortgage to pay, I was still single, but still had a mortgage to pay, just through caution to wind and thought, you know what, you know, what's the worst that can happen, I can't spend my life being miserable, the way I have been all these years, sitting in an office day in day out, I wanted to make that change, I wanted to take some responsibility. I thought, you know, I can't keep plugging away, no worried about losing my job um, all the way through retirement, and then to get retirement, look back and think, well, I've, I was so unhappy, you know, and now I'm, you know, I'm retired and I don't know how much time I've got left alive. So I'm a bit grim, but... That's, that's, that's the mindset I was in. So, yeah, I decided that I would, um, you know, do something I enjoyed doing. So I had to do what it takes to get there, make sure I, I paid the bills. I thought if I lose my house, send a day, I'll get a mortgage, I'll get back to the bank. Um, it's probably not worth, I'm sure this is probably the wrong attitude and probably get me out of trouble, but the way i seen it is my flat wasn't worth what the the balance of my mortgage was in negative e equity so end of the day you know just post it back to the bank they'll not get their money back and it's it's no our fault as well that uh, no it was through no fault of my own that my my flat wasn't worth what it you know that what the, the mortgage is you know that was one of the ones that was unfortunate enough to buy it just before 2008 um crash um before the credit crunch you know not not our fault, so why should I why should I care if I lose my flat? So you know I, I was willing to put that on the line. Uh, so I did what I had to do. Um and then I think within within a few weeks within a few weeks of um you know that starting with IL I was asked if I'd be comfortable taking like kettlebell classes, spin fit classes. Never done it before, so I just thought, yep, yeah, if it's what I've got to do to get shifts and that's what I'll do. I went away, um, 
I went to one of my colleagues' classes, like twice, uh, two kettlebell classes and two spin fit classes in one week. And I thought, yeah, I can do that. No worries. <laughs> so I did it. Um, and then at one point, within those few few weeks of uh, starting, I was standing in front of a class of about 20. Must have been about um, 20 customers with kettlebells, swinging kettlebells about and thinking, where did this come from? It's so surreal. I thought, I mean, I wouldn't even say a year ago. I'd say maybe three, four months prior to that. I would never envisage me doing that. At least six months before that, you know, when I was still in the office, uh, still in finance, I would never ever ever dream of being confident enough to get up in front of a class of 20 people in bar quarters while swinging kettlebells about. You know, and that that was a big kind of life changer for me. You know, I got my swagger back, confidence is unreal. Got myself into a, a relationship, met a really loving, beautiful girl that I've known for a long time. Um, but we were never just single girl and it never really, we never really had this, we were in a position to start dating. Um, so I met her when I was in the gym, funnily enough. Uh, yeah, so I met her again when she was in the gym, I did a programme that for her and then uh, just got a message and I'm not going into all this but got a message on, on Facebook uh, from her and we just we started dating. So that's another story I'll tell you more about in our time. Um, you know, and, uh, just look, look at my life now and I'm just so, so confident, so happy. I've never been, well, I mean, you're, you're talking about from my late 20s, so we're talking about a good 15 years. I'm nearly 40 now, 40 this year. So a good 15 years. Um, I've not been happy myself. I've been struggling anxiety-wise as I covered. No struggling with nerves. The zero self-esteem. And now all of a sudden, I'm posting videos on YouTube. You know, so all that is done exercise, there's no doubt about it. You know, like confidence came came with with training. So, you know, not only does it make you feel good in the, the short term right after your your um your your training session, but you know, once you start seeing the effect it has on you physically, um once you get involved with people I mean a lot of people Especially if they reach a certain weight or a certain size, they're really, really daunted going into the gym. They look at everybody that's that's fit, more than about them, really nice bodies, and they feel intimidated by it. If you get into kind of any gym, um, I'm going to maybe do a controversial um, video at a later date on uh, you know bodybuilders, you know that people call them gym posers, um, you know, and the the. They, they intimidate people, they, they stop people from going into certain gyms because, you know, they think, oh, that they're being sneered at or looked down at. Most of the gyms you'll probably find that, you know, they're some of the nicest, most helpful guys, guys out there are exceptions, but there is with every every human on this world, um, as opposed to another world, you know what I mean. So, you know, if you just don't let if you don't let things like that kind of stop you, you know, in fact, one one of our kind of regular customers had explained to me as well that she knows she was very daunted going into a gym. She would, at one point, I think, she said she'd actually walked into a gym. Went, nope, done an about turn and walked back, went home again. And then every, you know, that every time she went, she took that extra step. No, look, I'll just go on a treadmill. Oh, I don't like, I don't like running. I can't walk. I can't run. I'll, I'll just walk. Five minutes. Um, she just kept ramping up, ramping up. Now she's in running clubs and all sorts. She runs like ten k's and things, you know. Uh, she just let herself build up. Um, and her confidence will be so high. So once you start seeing what you can, what you can do, your confidence will will grow. With that, your mental health will improve. So. Anyway, that's that's my experience again. I was hoping this was going to be a bit of five minute video. Um, I don't know. I'll probably 
caught some of it anyway, but we're just now hitting about 25 minutes. Um, so yeah, so please, 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 if you if you do anything, please just consider taking up fitness. And I'm not saying that for to to sell you anything. I'm not saying come to me, I'll I'll train you. I'm not trying to sell you online PT programs. It is a service that I offer, but again, you can get if you join a gym, especially in Inverclyde, if you get Fitness Plus one. Again, I'm not trying to sell you anything, but you'll get you'll get programs. Um, made up free of charge as part of your membership of course um, you know so you can get, you can do your own thing whether you're with a trainer getting you know purchasing online training programs or joining a gym and getting that free if you want to go in and do your own thing then you know fine but just promise me you'll consider you know just giving it a go going into a gym taking up a sport just see what it does to your your confidence um, you know and just stick with it you know but sometimes you'll get in that oh I can't be doing this really tough day in work oh I can not get the energy you know I didn't perform maybe I wanted to perform I'm not seeing results I wanted to see but just keep plugging away at it just keep taking every little, set yourself three minor goals, very small goals, try and hit each one. As you hit them, the overall goal over a period of time will be massive compared to where it was before you started. See what it does for your mental health, see if it helps with anxiety. Like I say, it's not going to help all forms of mental health, but see if it helps with anxiety, see if it helps with your confidence, see if it helps with, um, you know, depression, just give it a go. Okay, so I don't really think there's anything else I can say on the matter, again, I'll leave it open to you, you can um, send me a wee message, uh, either on Facebook or on Instagram, um, on YouTube, it'd be very... It would help me a lot if you'd um, comment, like, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It would mean I can keep this going. It will be worth my while keeping it going. Um, you know, and it would, it, would, it would help me a lot if you, if you could do that. Um, but please, just let me know how you get on. Again, if you if you want to spot, talk, do a bit of exercise. You can have a wee chat in the comments. Uh, like it says, comment, you can contact me on Instagram at evolution under slash fitness athletics or one word and you can look us up on facebook at evolutions sorry evolution evolution fitness and athletics okay you know i'll put the you know i'll put it up on the screen as well um at the end of this video okay so if you're still watching i've not bored you to death and thanks for listening good night and I'll see you all again soon. Or you'll see me again soon. I'll not see you. Right, talk rubbish now. Okay, good night.